Good morning, find of the day. Here we are, look. Told you, it's lying in lark. It's over. Car park field. It's another blowy one. Song thrush is singing anyway. Heading on down to um, Bittenhide. And uh, we're going to have a little look, see if we can uh, see a barn owl. It's early enough. Why not? Let's get on down there. Okay, that didn't go exactly as the plan. Um, still too flooded to really get in properly. And um, as I had to turn back, and uh, when I got to the corner, looking across the field where the vinyl box boxes, <laughs> it flew across straight into the box. And I can't see into the doorway anyway, so I think that was the opportunity missed. It will be rather nice um, when it stops raining and blowing a gale most days, because then we'll be able to um, walk around the park and look at stuff. That'll be really novel right now. So uh, just in case um, anyone watching this hasn't seen a barn owl box before, this is what they look like. And on the left hand side, oh there he is, look, look, there's his little face. Oh, well, that's a bit of luck. So here we are getting something. Can you see him rocking his head? I'm doing it again, keep saying his. No guarantee it's a his at all. The microphone won't pick it up, but there's a nearby tree creeper, which is something I've promised myself I will show when I get a good opportunity. So definitely not um, what you call memorable footage of Barn Owl, but Barn Owl it is. I just see the lights just picking up slightly now, so you can just about see his head, but uh, interesting little rocking motion. I'm guessing I haven't read this that uh, to get a better three-dimensional view of what's below they rock their heads because it allows the eyes to do something you can see now proper pier out there I don't want to. So I was going to show you my new toy. The phone fits horizontally in landscape. Worth the mode I've been trying to uh, achieve in this. The uh, little top just comes up like that. Look, just snaps closed and holds the phone tight. And hey presto, hey presto, you can do that and uh, pan around a lot more easily. And right now, I'm waiting, looking across the uh, field there. Uh, I didn't bother including a little clip that I got the other day of a little egret going over. I missed six, then the seventh one went past, and then I put the most lame piece of footage um, in one of my videos the other day. The thing was out of focus, I don't really know why I included it. Um, I promise to get better. So I've just been watching a few things, pinging around, there's uh, still handfuls of red wing that'll be around till very early April, to be honest, that's the typical pattern for us. Um, little bunch of um, starlings, flock of starlings in a ball came shooting over um, and almost too quick to see straight afterwards it was uh, a sparrow hawk in pursuit, looped back over, but I didn't even get the chance to lift this up um, so yeah it's a few things pinging about relatively high winds again and uh, yeah burning you have to be pretty quick we know this already it's certainly not what you would call near but there it is that green woodpecker I was uh, promising the other day just heard it call cool. 
and uh, not surprisingly it's uh, on a tree that it probably visits every single day because uh, I've seen it in this tree countless times. I should be able to muster some uh, better closer footage than this because uh, they do spend a lot of time in the field behind me, the car park field. Here, just coming in the foreground there. Pretty distinctive, black and white. Hopefully we'll get it broadside enough, not for long though. Give the game away. It's a golden eye. So, yeah. Slightly better. In these conditions, in fairness, it's pretty hard work. So, uh, I want to talk about some more tips, more top tips. Focusing on the ducks at the back, or the middle bar there, all moving to the right. And I'm going to call it anyway, for those that don't know, these are pop chard. And uh, also a wintering bird here. And uh, they're up and down all the time, just like the golden eye. Mm, always greater numbers, um, I think in some the best counts we've had at our little uh, set of gravel pits is sort of about about 200 is a good number any winter um, but somewhere between 90 and 150 is the, is the typical uh, whereas Goldeneye uh, our peak I think was 44 or 46 not quite 10 years ago but getting on for that I don't think we've got well we got close to double figures uh, on one or two days late last year um, so it's a much more uncommon duck, the golden eye. But the, the top tip really I was going to refer to is, is when you have a set of gravel pits like we have that are on um, a country park, and oh, there he is again, look. <laughs> um, the, um, there's all sorts of recreational things going on. There's a few fishermen out this morning. Um, I doubt there'll be many people doing boating and stuff like that, but the ducks will find somewhere else to go. And for us, that's uh, often Sanford Lake, which is the first lake to, the, to my right. Um, and then uh, some go to Lavels Lake and some go to Lee Farm. Some even go a mile or so north down to Twyford Pits. But the bottom line, oh, there you go, that was nice. Gave us a little flap there. Is he going to stay in view for a bit longer for a change? Nice. The top tip is if you have ducks that move around between lakes, generally speaking, they will find another lake to, to, to go on to. Um, what am I trying to say? Basically, if, if they go to and from a lake, there will be another lake where they like to rest up and sleep. And if you want to get uh, good footage of these things, I'm not there at the moment, but I don't really have the time slot today. But for me, if I had time, I would head to Sanford at a time in which I know the ducks will start to move over to there. They'll carry on feeding to some degree, but they'll soon settle down into a little raft on the lake and um, go to sleep. Before they do that, they'll just start to slow down and you'll get an opportunity to sort of really study them and get to grips with males and females, which is a very good area to become familiar with. Just about to leave and these two lovely little chaps, or Mr. and Mrs. drop in. They always give a little blast of call before they arrive. And uh, no doubt paired up, of course, otherwise they wouldn't be standing so close to each other. Um, but uh, uh, interesting they favour the jetty but I think it's just because they're kind of sussing things out they probably know that uh, 
people will be walking past any moment. Majority of people at this time are either joggers or dog walkers. And, um, but uh, <laughs> just fun watching them rocking around on that jetty there. It's so blowy, it's hard to get any steady footage. So, uh, but uh, just allow me to say, when it is calmer and the birds stand still, I'll be able to get okay footage, but my whole vlog is, is, is not about pristine, um, photographic, immaculate pictures. It's about real birding and identifying birds with the conditions you have. And uh, so as things uh, happen, when I'm doing this uh, post, or when I'm doing my posts, uh, I'll be working with whatever it, I'm, I'm given. The movement of the wave makes the phone um, go out of focus too. So uh, but you can just about make out there kind of like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> steady, Burley, steady. And again, I'm going to wander over to your mate. That. Not that much jetty left, We're pretty near the end. They can make an easy uh, escape when they need to, and they almost certainly will. They won't stay on there. I don't know whether you could see the mud on the right hand bird. This is a species of wader, and, it's, and oyster catchers in particular do like the grassy areas of the old golf course and the uh, landfill, where no doubt they will find worms and all sorts of other lovely treats that they like. And chill out. So that's about all I'm going to have time for just for the moment. Um, I am so looking forward to some better weather. Um, so we don't have a blowing gale in the background so we can concentrate on some of the bird songs. I'm not moaning about anything. I'm just saying it, it is more pleasant. Even I admit nicer weather makes a nicer birding experience, but it doesn't always make nicer birding. Um, always hopeful that in um, any windy conditions, any kind of weather extremes, it'll bring birds in you wouldn't normally see. We haven't seen anything so far, but I haven't been out for several days. So again, you can't have your finger on the pulse if it's days and days between when you get out to your local patch. So top tip, get out to your local patch as often as possible, if not daily. And when you're getting into migration times, more than once a day, and you can watch the picture changing and unfolding all the time. I'm Fraser Cottington. This is Find of the Day. Don't forget to smash the like button, share, and hit the subscribe so you get notified when I put a new video up. Take care.